Day Show on TV3 and it's proudly brought to you by Forever Clear. Live from Accra, Ghana, welcome to the Day Show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's your host, Bella Mundi. Oh my word, we're finally here and it's so good to see all of you. A round of applause for yourselves one more time. Well, yes, finally we are here. We've been waiting so long for this moment and the day show on TV3 and it's proudly brought to you by Forever Clear. But of course, remember that we've been planning for so long to bring you the very best of talk shows and entertainment on TV and your queen of social issues is right here. My name is Bella Mundi and thank you so much for tuning in as well. Now, as you all know, coronavirus has brought the world to a standstill. Now, you have to keep washing your hands, you have to keep sanitizing and you also have to stay at least two meters away from everyone else. We're practicing social distancing. So pardon us, our studio audience are made up of just a few people because we're trying to keep everyone as safe as possible. And that's what we'll be discussing today on the show, coronavirus. I'll give you more details on that. There are a few segments as well, from BU to catch up to a lot of other things as well. And we'll give our audience the opportunity to interact with us as well as you watching at home. And so join us on social media and let's get talking. What do you know about coronavirus? We have some experts who'll be teaching us a thing or two. And so you know what? At this point, let's start off with some inspiration. Now for every episode, we'll have a very respected individual in the country inspiring our young people to greatness. Take a look at this segment called Be You. That's how we intend to inspire you one message at a time. And so I hope that that hits you at the right place and hopefully you can make some changes in your life. It is a day show. We have so much coming up. Keep watching. Purchase your Forever Clear sanitizers and help support the eradication of COVID-19. Welcome back. Welcome back. It's the first ever edition of The Day Show. We're right here at TV3 and we're recording with a beautiful studio audience who are all charged up and so are we. Now today we're discussing coronavirus. There have been a lot of messages via social media and traditional media and we'll be discussing some of the myths and of course everything else you need to know about it. And so you are at the right place and a big thank you going out to Forever Claire for making this show a possibility. Also thank you going out to Oma Hair and to Seema Brew for styling me as well. My experts are seated but right before that aside coronavirus there are lots of other things that are going on around the world and so it's time to do some catch-up take a look hi Bella hi everyone I cannot believe it's our very first show my name is Helen welcome to catch up I will be bringing you this and every week juicy topics from social to entertainment to lifestyle and international stories so on to our first story. Now we all know COVID-19 is continuing to wreak havoc across the globe. Now the king of Thailand has found a very unique way to lock down. He has um, isolated himself in a very plush hotel in Germany with not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but 20 women uh, were told that he actually had special permission from Germany to lock down in this very, very unique way. Now, there's no word on whether or not his fourth wife will be joining the entourage. Uh, we're told 119 members of his party were turned away in the wake of coronavirus fears. Now, people have taken to the internet to dub him now King of Thailand, if you know what I'm saying. Now, on to my second story. Vice Osei Kufo, aka Obo, has taken to social media to dispel rumors that he has tested positive for COVID-19. Obo is saying it is all fake news. The former president of the Musicians Union of Ghana, Musica, has also asked his lawyer 
to write to the media and the general public to respect his privacy in such a delicate time. He's also stating that uh, people should fact check and not report fake news and should do their due diligence when reporting this news. Of course, COVID-19 is a very sensitive topic and um, we wish his family all the best in this difficult time. Now for my third story, a more exciting story. Family Feud has found its way to Africa. Emmy Award winning entertainer Steve Harvey, who has always said it was his dream to bring Family Feud to Africa, has made that possible. Now it's going to be airing tonight on TV3, your number one station, and every other Saturday at 9 p.m. You definitely don't want to miss this long standing entertainment show, um, which involves some very familiar, familiar faces. Now, on to some great news. I know we're all in dire need of a bit of a pick-me-up. We're hearing reports that Australia is spearheading the tests for possibly providing a vaccine for the coronavirus. Now, this comes in the wake of the US of A's um, trials, and we're hoping that very soon we're going to have even more great news for all of mankind. Um, it's been quite the journey with the COVID-19 virus so we want all the good news that we can get. Hopefully next week I'll be back with even better news on how this vaccine trial is actually going. So that is it for catch up. I know I could do this all day as well. As I mentioned every week I will be bringing you stories from around the world. Can't wait to see you next week. Goodbye. For a fair show, this might not be the most exciting topic, right? You probably were expecting something more... But this is important, is it not? Yeah. Are you washing your hands regularly? Are you sanitizing? Do you even have your sanitizers here? Let me see. Show me. Show me some evidence. You do? Okay, that's good. I hope you're not kissing your girlfriends and boyfriends to... You're staying away from them, right? But we need you to all remain healthy and to remain alive. And so please try your very best, okay? And that goes out to you as well. Now, all around the world, thousands and thousands of people have lost their lives to coronavirus. A lot more have also tested positive. Now, this is something that started towards the end of uh, December 2019. And, of course, it started in China. I'm sure that the world didn't take it too seriously. But here we are today recording huge numbers in various countries. Now, when it comes to the epicenter, it's moved from China to Spain. Spain, to Italy, to France, and also to the U.S. Ghana is gradually building up on the numbers as well. Are people really taking all the safety precautions, um, you know, are they really taking it seriously? What can we do to educate the public more? And what are we not doing right as well? And that's what we're discussing on the show today. But quickly, take a look at something that we put together for you, and I'll introduce my guest to you right after. From nowhere there was a sudden crash, causing the entire nation into a state of emergency. How could the birth of such a virus cripple the economy? Like a fountain, it has gained volume from one infected to 10, then 200, then 2,000, resulting in unimaginable deaths where the point of human survival for both the rich and the poor depends on hand sanitizers, proper hand washing techniques and fumigation processes. It is alarming. It seems not to have a cure. It undoubtedly is drawing us closer to our graves. The fear in the wake of this disease is dreadful. COVID-19 outbreak is real. Be on guard, be protected, don't live in doubt. All right, so, well, that's a bit of a documentary on coronavirus. And here at TV3, right before the taping of the day show, uh, we made sure to get everyone to wash their hands, use their sanitizers, and also check their temperatures as well. And I hope that that worked. Nobody's sick, right? No? no? Even if you are sick, you lie to us. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not the only one who's scared. Like, when I'm coughing, I'm like, okay. 
I'm, I'm not going to cough too much for people to think that I have coronavirus. And I don't know if you saw that video of the Chinese man who boarded a church or, and everybody was running away. Would you have gotten down? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, you would have. Oh, you won't get down if it's a Ghanaian, but you get down if it's a Chinese. It's really sad, though. But let's meet our guest for today. And so at my far left, I have Dr. Hannah Lisa. Uh, she's a private medical practitioner, health advocate, and executive at Health Avail. So good to have you, doctor. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm yeah? Doing. OK. And also, we have uh, a clinical psychologist, Nate Dua, is also joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's such a pleasure having you in here. Thank I don't you. know if you saw that video um, as well of yeah. the, the Ghanaians who got off the trotro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does yeah. it mean that people really don't understand what coronavirus really is? Well, it means that people are processing information and trying to do their best to protect themselves. Yeah. But also they are processing uh, dodgy information. Yeah. Okay? Initially, they started from far off, mm -hmm. Wuhan in Canada, hey, China, well, in China, yes. Right, in China, right? And we, we, we felt, you know, far, far away, away from, from it. Far away from it, yeah. Then it's on the continent, it's in Ghana, mm -hmm. okay? And so this sense of it being foreign, it being alien, right, mm -hmm. is something that people look out for. So if you look like a foreigner, you look like you've come from somewhere it switches on my systems already, yeah. right? Yeah. I'm on alert, mm -hmm. okay? We've crossed that. There's been a transition now where there's, uh, there are local cases and we're experiencing what we call uh, horizontal, yeah. right, or yeah. community transmission. So it could be any of us. It could be. So in a way, I'm explaining what happened in that video, but not justifying it as uh, that kind of preventive measure. Mm -hmm. Right, because people have to get around, and we will have to mix with people who look like foreigners or are actually oh, wow. foreigners. Yeah. Right, but this is us trying to process danger, right, mm -hmm. and respond in a certain in way. In a certain yeah. way. But that means that education hasn't gone that far because we've all been concerned not about the f uh, elite who live in the bigger cities, but the other people who are who form majority of you know the informal sector, the people mm -hmm. who live in the hinterlands, and whether they even know what to do to protect themselves. I know doctors have been educating. We've had a lot of people, even the media, doing their best to educate. But has it been enough for you, Hannah? I think we're doing our best. There's a lot of information around. But human as we are, we choose what we want to believe. So there's information. We've told you the sites to go to. We told you Ghana Health Service. We told you World Health Organization. But it's not that but, simple to just log on to the internet would rather, for people. But people would rather believe the myths. There's so many myths around. People would rather believe the myths. They'd rather ask their friends. And now one of the challenges we're dealing with is stigmatization, mm -hmm. just like in the video. So now people are stigmatizing against people from countries in which the disease has been confirmed or yeah. people are being treated. And now they started stigmatizing against Ghanaians with accents because they think that once you have an accent, you're coming for... Oh, yeah, yes, doing you're that. Coming from, yes. I'm now finding and, out about this. Yes, and so stigmatization is one of the biggest challenges. So in as much as we are educating, people too want to choose their source of information. And for that, it's difficult to really control it. So Break it down for us then. So if... Of course, I, I can't just look at you and assume that you have coronavirus. No. And I can't just look in the mirror and think that's okay, I have it. But a lot of us are seeing some signs and symptoms. I'm not sure if it's psychological mm. or we actually do have it. Have you been coughing? It's psychological, it's psychological eh? Yeah. Not say, is it psychological? Well, you see, you're programmed to respond to danger, mm. right? This is a threat. It's an infectious disease. Mm -hmm. So you can get it from somebody, right? It doesn't have a cure. Yeah. We've never encountered it before. So even the experts, the specialists who should be protecting us are also, or were also initially at a loss. Yeah. A loss. So we're now gaining more and more understanding of what okay. it is. So this is the, the case. I tell you there's danger. It's not an animal. It's not a human being. Mm. It's not wind. It's not air, but it's coming. Yeah. Right? So mm -hmm. you, 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 you're anxious. And you, can't, you can't sleep yeah. because you don't know when it's coming and oh. where it's coming from and in what form. Yeah. So people are overly anxious yeah. and therefore anything that uh, switches on a protective response, they respond to. It looks like this. I heard it is this, right? Years back when I did uh, HIV training in Uganda, uh, after some point now, everything, mm, why, why do I have this rash? Yeah. Why do I have this? Mm. 
So a certain degree of that is normal. Okay. But we must learn how to normalize it and also how to focus and cut down to real information yeah. and real protective uh, measures that yeah. we can take. I want to find out from you how well versed you are in this, on this topic. So do you know what the signs and symptoms are of head? I mean, what could they be? Cough, okay. Fever, Fever yeah? Okay, what? D difficulty in breathing. I can tell you this morning, I wasn't sure if I was breathing right or not. And I was afraid. And uh, there's, there's an overload, like he said, of information, especially on social media. And I'm guilty because I'm literally just taking information, but I'm trying to take it from the most viable sources so that I can keep people um, you know, updated as well. But break it down for us. What really are the symptoms? Because I've also read that um, when you, loss of words, Taste, what do you call it? When you're smell. 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 That's the new one. Nausea. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you didn't know that, right? Yeah. Well, I read that. And I think I watched a bit of that yes. on international yeah. uh, TV as well. So, yeah. what really are the symptoms? So, you see, the thing about coronaviruses is that they produce, it's a family of viruses, and then they have respiratory symptoms. So, there's okay. fever, there's cough, mostly dry, there's shortness of breath. These are the main ones. But then there are some people who could have a sore throat. There are some people who could have nasal congestion. There are some people who could have a runny nose. There are some people mm. who could even have diarrhea. And now there are some people who could have anosmia. So it's... And the, anosmia is the... Yes, your, you lose your sense of smell. Of smell. Okay. So you see, initially they will tell you that these are the main things you should look out for. Look out for a fever, look out for a dry cough, look out for shortness of breath, that's inability to breathe. But then these symptoms can be different or there could be more or less in different patients. Mm -hmm. So now the only real way is to test. But we don't even have enough test kits. That so that's why we've told you, initially when it was just um, imported cases, we told you if you have been um, exposed to somebody from a country in which it's been confirmed. Now that it's here, we have areas, and then we told you what the symptoms are, what to expect. Mm -hmm. So you tell us. You can go into self-quarantine, observe yourself for 2 to 14 days, and then let us know when you start having these symptoms, if you've been exposed to somebody like that. Um, or you can come to the hospital and let us know you're having these kind of symptoms, and then we can take it from there. Note, she says self-quarantine, self-observation. I've heard self-monitoring and all of that. That already can drive me crazy. All right, we'll cure you. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want us to but, treat, but <laughs> treat first? But yeah. it's, it's a lot of words. It's a lot of terminologies, yeah. right? To quarantine means to put somebody who's been exposed to some kind of risk away from others, okay? A person in quarantine has not been confirmed, but there's that danger that they've been exposed. If you've been exposed, there's a certain incubation period after which you might or you should show symptoms. Yeah. So we keep you away, right? Either we are doing it for you or you're doing it yourself. Hence, self-quarantine. Isolation is different. Isolation refers to confirmed cases. Now we know you have it and we are isolating you oh. so that you don't spread it. Okay. But talking about someone being in isolation because he tested positive, and again, thank you to North Adria, we're able to speak to case number seven. Right. Okay, so his name is Simeon Te Nate, and he's been, um, ag he agreed actually to tell us what it's like being in isolation, what even led him to get tested as well. And so he's on the line right now. Hello, Simeon. Hello, Bella. Hi, thank you so much for joining us on the day show. You're welcome, by the way. I hope you're doing better. By God, Grace, I'm doing fine. Okay, so if I may find out, you are still in isolation at the moment. Exactly. How long has it been since you tested positive, first of all? Um, it has not been an easy journey. Okay. First of all, uh, I wanted to know how many days have you been in isolation? Because you're being treated. I've been in isolation center for almost about eight days now. Eight days? Yeah. At what point did you get tested? Were you showing symptoms? I was having mild symptoms. Okay. And what uh, are those? Um, I was, I was coughing and I was having some headache. Okay. Yeah. Just so, those two? Yeah, just those two. Hey. <laughs> okay. So did you go to the hospital yourself? Run me through what led to you getting tested. Okay. 
you know, I arrived uh, in the country that was um, on the 14th of, uh, of March. Okay. That was a Saturday, and I was back straight away to my house. When I came, I went for self-isolation, okay. uh, self-quarantine. But uh, because of the symptoms that I was showing, I called my father-in-law, who happens to be a medical practitioner mm. and a public health specialist. And then I told him that, oh, I've been coughing and then I have some headache. Okay. And then he said he cannot tell whether it is the virus because this virus is one thing. It's very difficult to tell if you have the virus. So he would advise that I should go and get tested. So, um, in fact, I have to violate my employee directive of staying in the house for 14 days. Yeah. Because my wife has given birth at the hospital and I wanted to see the children. I understand my daughter, my newborn baby, also requires some blood transfusion. Aww. And my blood more or less matches with her own. So, I wanted to test, and when I finish the test, and it's negative. Mm -hmm. In case of any emergency, I would be able to donate blood to her. To her. So okay. that was the motivation to go to the center to get screened. Wow. Unfortunately, when the result came out, I was positive. How did it so, feel when you, you found out that you were positive? Were you scared? Um, initially, I was scared. Let me be honest with you. Okay. It's not, <laughs> it's not easy to receive such information, but... Mm -hmm. Um, I said it to myself, I'll go through this thing and come out to you. Yeah. So quickly, I have to put the family, we own the family business. I asked them to shut down the family business. Okay. Then I asked the rest of my children to move to the room and then self-quarantine. It was very difficult for me to break the news to them. Okay. But I had a trusted friend in the house and I called him. He's a man, so a guy just like me. And I said, you know what? I've been tested positive and I'm living. So take care of the family, take care of my property while I leave. This must have so, been difficult for your family. But okay, so once you were picked up, um, you know, where, you can't tell us where you were taken to, but I believe that that was where you started, you know, the isolation. What's been the treatment process like? And have you seen any more symptoms or are you getting better? Okay, um, after the confirmation, uh, I was brought to the center, that's the isolation center, with an, uh, by an ambulance. Okay. And the symptoms, the only thing that I had subsequently was diarrhea, but that has stopped. Okay. Uh, it has stopped. Um, basically, let me see, those are the symptoms over here, and we are being cared for in the center by professionals. We have okay. nurses and medical team who are here, who supervise us and make sure we take our drugs. Uh, me in particular, I have only been on vitamin C because they said my oh. situation is quite mild, so I have hmm. to boost my immune system okay. and then make sure I eat well. So they put us on uh, me in particular. I take a lot of vegetables early okay. in the morning. I don't. I can't say for the rest of my colleagues, but I take a lot of vegetables, water. Okay. At the center. So basically, that is what happened. Well, but I believe you're getting better. You don't know how long you'll stay in there for, do you? Um, I'm doing fine. As of now, I can say I have recovered. Mm. Uh, and I'm in good shape. But they have okay. take, uh, they have taken my... Yesterday, my sample was taken to the UG for a red test. Oh, okay. And my prayer is that God, God, God should smile at me. Let All me right. be negative and let me come out of this isolation center. <laughs> Huh. I don't want to stay here any longer. <laughs> don't worry. I know you'll be fine. And I'm sure that they've tested your family as well, just to be sure that yes, you did not pass all on the my virus. family members have been tested. Yeah, it's negative. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Simeon, <laughs> thank you so much yeah. for speaking to us and for sharing your story. And we See, pray that you'll I be want fine. To educate the public on one or two things. Okay. That people should adhere to the rules and regulations by the Ghana Health Service. Mm. It is in our best interest as a country to stay indoors. People are taking the thing for a joke, but unless maybe you are concerned before you realize that uh, it's a serious thing. Yeah. Even being in the isolation center is not a, an easy thing. And the kind of discrimination that you face out there is not an easy thing. Thank you. 
Thank you so thank much, you. Simeon. Simeon Te Nate, thank you for sharing your story with us. And I think he deserves a round of applause. <laughs> I mean, first of all, it will be so difficult, even though it's necessary, for mm -hmm. me to tell the world that I've tested positive. I'm sure what you just heard was reassuring. Yeah. yeah. It helps people on a voluntary basis to come and say, hey, I think I met this person or I had some contact. Yeah. There's still the challenge of stigma, mm -hmm. right? But it moves our national response and helps us. Exactly. So we've got to start looking at some of these things and learning from his example. True. Right? And he's willing to educate. Mm. Okay. On that note, I will test very soon and I'll let you know. It's chest bends or heart bends, is it also? Because I've been feeling that. <laughs> I'll be back. It's the day show. I want to discuss it coronavirus. Purchase your Forever Clear sanitizers and help support the eradication of COVID-19. All right, you're welcome back. It's still the day show. This is the first episode and we're learning so much already. Uh, I've been in the studio with a clinical psychologist, Nauti Dia, and also a medical practitioner, Hannah Lisa, and she's also the executive director at Health Avail. And we also spoke to uh, Simeon Te Nate, and he tested positive to coronavirus. So he was just running us through what life is like living with the virus in isolation and how he actually even feels better. But let's quickly go on the streets and find out from people what they know about the virus. And aside that as well, what remedies are they putting in place to ensure that they don't get infected? And it will interest you to find out what one person actually said. Take a look. The first time coronavirus came in town, everybody was scared. Some people were saying it will kill you. When you get it, you will die. You will get various sicknesses. Some said you will cough blood and so many weird, weird things. And it put a lot of panic into people who had no idea, no facts about coronavirus. So it made it look like the virus, immediately you get it, then that's all. You are gone. I'm really shaking now as I'm talking which I'm not supposed to. We're doing the necessary things, as in washing our hands or using sanitizers, washing under, um, with soap under running water and all that. But our safety is what I'm scared about here right now. If you do the same thing, me bye bye or chia me kwa chia me, and so me again. If you obi and chia obi, just morning morning no obi ya ko. They hire our partner market because I buy holidays in Adoson. Nipa makrum obi and pi shein koso market I mean ya isi abi bi ya ko form. Ya protect you and you so buy. In kawasi timi didi kakra so so nipa makrum ene se ene juo so bi ya ni krum krum a yedi. Kuna virus ya buy the affect business be bri. So, I say, I bet I say, I say, one hour, two hours, two hours, no be a my. And we cry, I should say, we are motor and all them. I always say, on only banning through it, you have to miss your contact near too close. I bet say, Juma, and no be ma. Me near me says last week, Obiama. The papa could pen on my year, a dear man, no, a babbler. So, and so, and your market in Kitina, me ba, me too. See, in fact, a high, a high, a pa. There is no patronage here compared to our previous times. And without sales, we can't keep this company growing or in business. And it's going to cause us unemployment in case we shut the company down. baby. <laughs> If I'm to die by coronavirus, <laughs> I think I'll prefer the accident rather. Because, the, well, even though there's good news from those who have uh, explained what is going on, those who are in the hospital beds and have given interviews, there's a bit of pain and frustration and what you go, even the panic alone will kill you. 
And so, I mean, accident, I like that one. <laughs> Don't go nervous. <laughs>
And also because the droplets, it's from droplets when you cough or sneeze. You're not sure who's going to cough or sneeze. Mm. You're not sure which surface the person has coughed or sneezed on. Yeah. So you can come into contact with that. So social distancing is a deliberate effort that is done by us. Like the way you're sitting, the way we are sitting today. We deliberately put in these measures. Okay. But when you ask people, stay away from certain places, from churches, from mosques, from parties, from clubs, from restaurants, from pubs, they think that it's a punishment. No. It's a way in which we're avoiding the spread yeah. of the virus. Okay. The other thing to do is... Even, we, even oh. before you move on, sorry to cut you. So you're talking about the droplets landing on surfaces. Yeah. Uh, there was a recent report that, you know, they found some of the viruses on the some surfaces of the cruise ship that, you know, docked, I think in, where was it, Hong Kong or so, Japan, one Japan. of them. 17 days later, they still saw some active viruses on there as well. And so the question is... So if we have them staying on surfaces, first of all, is that even right? And if it's right, if we have them staying on surfaces for so long, social distancing, I may not get close to you, but the moment you move and I come and sit there, am I not at risk if I touch? Yes, you're at risk. That's why we've asked you to do the right things. So even if it's been on this surface for so many days, you touch it, you don't put your hands on your eye, your nose and your mouth. You disinfect your hand immediately. You wash it immediately. You've protected yourself. Hmm. It's because you don't know what you're going to be exposed to. That's why there are so many precautions that you should take. When you take these precautions... <laughs> I'm yeah, that's one of, who struggles to That's touch, one of the most difficult... You. That's yeah. one of the most difficult things. Yes. Don't touch your face, your eyes, and then your nose. Yes, it's one of the most difficult things. But if you're taking these precautions, you should be okay. Let me, let me just emphasize something. I, I heard a couple of you saying it's getting scary. It is, but listen, there is no 100% foolproof protection, right? Okay. So they say... Wash your hands is not 100%. Listen, listen okay. to me, okay? <laughs> okay? If you wash your hands and you follow some of these things, you are less likely, okay? It's not foolproof. Okay. Doctors in full gear so are doctors. catching it. But you follow. So it's not just wear this thing and you can do anything. You can do karate and yeah, all things. Yeah, yeah. No, you're wearing it and you, you can't wear your wedding band. You can't wear it and stuff your mobile phone in that PPE. Okay. And then take it out and say, hey, honey, mm -hmm. really? Yeah. It's strict, deliberate discipline. Right? Mm -hmm. Difficult, but not impossible. Now, let me also add, social distancing is not just the space, the physical space. Okay. It's arrangements. There are companies that are now asking people to go on leave. Mm -hmm. It's a social distancing me measure, right? There are some who are saying work from home, okay, mm -hmm. right? So all of this is part of social distancing. Stop or close churches. Churches are now having online services. It is part of the distancing. So let's be sure that we understand what it is. And like Hannah said, we practice it. All right. Well, talking about practicing, we're going to teach you the right way to wash your hands. And so quickly take a look at this video. Hand washing tips. One, wet your hands and apply enough liquid soap to create a good lather and the running water. Two, rub palms together. Three, rub the back of the hands. Four, interlink your fingers. Five, cap your fingers. Six, clean the thumbs. Seven, rub palms with your finger. Don't forget to wash your hands for about 20 seconds. Stay healthy, spread calm, not fear. All right, so that's how to wash your hands the right way. And like they say, remember to sing happy birthday. How many times? Like two, three times? Uh, yeah, that's how long you should wash your hands and make sure that you wash every corner, every part of it. And so we're talking about coronavirus and how you can stay safe and healthy with my guests and my studio audience. We'll be back. It's The Day Show.
back. It's the first ever taping of the day show. We're discussing coronavirus, and of course, that's expected because we want to keep you healthy and keep you safe as well. And so anyway, uh, discussion has gone quite far. Uh, we've also learned how to wash our hands. We've spoken to uh, an individual who tested positive and is currently in isolation. I also have Nauti Dria, who's a clinical psychologist, and Dr. Hannah Lisa Tete. Of course, she is the executive director of Health Avail. Now, we'll come to our studio guests so they can ask a few questions. But we've been talking so much about the public, what they should do to protect themselves and all of that. But there are some front runners who are also at risk. And I'm talking about the health professionals. They are the ones who come into close contact most of the time with the people who are tested uh, positive. And so it's very likely that we'll have a number of them catching the virus. A few of them have passed on in other countries. We pray it doesn't happen in Ghana because it's, it will be too much to take in. We already don't have enough of you. But Hannah, let me find out, have you come into contact with any of them? Have you had to test anyone? Uh, has the person tested positive? And what, what was it like, uh, you know, handling the situation? Okay, so when we have suspected cases, initially would all be apprehensive. I mean, there are people who are really scared. And then most of us actually try to be rational about it because we're like, okay, at least 90% will survive, 90% will recover. So most of us health workers, because we have that information, mm -hmm. we try to be rational about it. But not everybody is as rational. Um, and the thing is, the, I think the fear is waiting for the results of the person. Mm. So it's like you and the person are waiting for the results. So when you have a suspected case and the samples have been taken, you are waiting for the results, just like the person is waiting for the results. Because if the person tests positive, then you know that you have to go into self-quarantine and then you have to be tested as well. Wow. Because you have now become a contact. So I think it's that period of waiting to know what awaits you is what causes a lot of apprehension amongst us. Our other concerns are the fact that well, in my place, we have everything, but in, in some places, people are struggling for masks, people are struggling for gloves, people are struggling for PPEs to work with. Mm -hmm. So people are not comfortable. Like, we're praying the numbers don't increase, because when the numbers increase, we know that we may not be fully protected, and that's where the fear is coming from. Okay. We're also concerned about our family. So mm -hmm. when I go home, am I, I mean, I'm okay if I get it well, because I know I'll recover, but that same trouble having to be suffered by my family members. So you're not just thinking about yourself, you're thinking about your family members, you're yeah. thinking about uh, other workers that you've come into contact with, looking at the way our healthcare system is. Even at our OPDs, we have so many people sitting there. So the contacts for us mm -hmm. are a lot, and that's what causes a lot of worry amongst us. Okay, you still have your OPDs open. I thought I read somewhere that- There are certain places that are- Where they've closed yes, their but, OPDs. But there are certain other places that are running. Now, to run us mm. through the psychological effect briefly, so we right. can speak so, to- So, this is about our health system. It's very difficult to practice social distancing in certain OPDs. You must have space, you must have resources, and you must have a public that is that ready is, to cooperate. Yeah. Okay, so that's a challenge for us. And mm. that is why we must have good, accurate, okay. dependable information. Okay. Okay, if we're getting that, then people know where to go, what to do, and so on and so forth. All it's right. still a crisis, but and we're we still in crisis, but we're calm and people know what to do. Exactly. In you need to way. you need to yeah. stay calm. Let me go to my audience now. Anybody has a question, contribution? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, go ahead. So my name is Jill Akusi Udinka, and I'd like to know if having just one of the symptoms is a sign, and also if you've been coughing for a while, is there a probability of you getting infected? It's important for people to understand that. Before there was COVID, there were a lot of other diseases that were making us cough, making us have a headache, making us have a sore throat and a runny nose. So the fact that you're coughing does not necessarily mean that you have COVID-19. Right. That's why I explained all the symptoms to look out for. If you're uncomfortable, come to the hospital. We'll be able to help you out. All right. Uh, my question is, is there a spiritual myth attached to this? Because people say that even if you wash your hands, use hand sanitizers, and you don't pray, if it will catch you, it will catch you. And secondly, can Akpeteshi hmm. boost your immune system or not so kill? We have people saying Akpeteshi can boost your immune system and kill the virus. Is it true? Thank okay. you. Yeah. Hmm. 
Now, the thing about aqua teshi is that you're supposed to use an alcohol-based sanitizer for your hands. It's just used to disinfect or sanitize your hand. It doesn't kill the germs that are, it doesn't kill the virus that is inside you. So taking aqua teshi, thinking that it will kill the virus inside you is a no-no because aqua teshi in itself has very negative effects on the body. Okay. Spirituality, yes. right? Um, somebody said what? If you take the medication and you don't, and you don't pray, pray, right? Verse By all 19. means, pray. Okay, but God helps those who help, help yes, themselves. themselves. There are things we are supposed to do, right? If you pray and you jump in front of a, an oncoming articulator, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. right? Okay, maybe by a miracle you survive, but rather you didn't do that. Don't yeah. test your God, okay? okay? I know somebody in quarantine right now, I've told the person, you tested your God by going where you went, okay? Mm. So by all means, pray, observe your faith, Okay, it calms you in a certain way as well, right? But do what you're supposed to do. And if you have symptoms, don't sit there speaking tongues. Report. Yeah. Okay, that's what God wants us to do to protect this country and yeah. ourselves. Definitely. And so I believe we've answered all the questions. And I hope it's been very enlightening for all yeah. of you as well. Yes. Thank you all so much for joining us for today's edition of The Day Show, which is the first, by the way. And so you've made history, right? Yeah. I know. To Norte, yeah, he's a clinical psychologist. I had to cry and pray <laughs> before, you know. Yeah, but he still came anyway, and Science he and helped symptoms. us. Signs and symptoms, eh? Oh, oh, uh, <laughs> what? He told me it's girls' things. Oh well, <laughs> no, but he also gave us the opportunity to speak to Simeon, who tested positive. And so, right. thank you so much uh, for joining us and for You're welcome. teaching us a lot of things as well. And also to Han Lisa Tete, she is a medical practitioner. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. Always. And yeah, we definitely will see you again. And to all of you out there as well, I know that you're probably, you know, trying so hard to wash your hands, to use your sanitizers. Don't stop. Keep doing that. Keep praying. And let's continue to pray for Ghana as well and hope that we all would be safe and we'll get rid of coronavirus. And so thank you again so much for joining us. Thank you. And you too as well. That's how we sign off. And a big thank you to Forever Claire, our sponsors, and also thanks to Sima Brew to Oh My Hair to Face View, and also to all the crew members for making today a possibility. We'll see you again next week. Have a good evening. Yeah. Yeah.